Hi everybody, I'm Bree the Plant Lady. And I'm Amy the Gardener. And today we are gonna show you how easy it is to fill in open space by direct seeding crimson clover and buckwheat. Now today we were giving a talk to a garden club, a local garden club, and was showing them pictures of how beautiful this combination is. And it reminded me that we haven't actually sown any here yet. So we gotta get on that. And um, basically these are cover crops that you can just put into open sunny areas. They germinate really quickly. And these are both plants that are kind of tolerant of this weird spring season. When the soil temperature is still a little too cold for your summer plants. Um, but, you know, like we're getting to the tail end of doing like, you know, cauliflower and kale and mustard and those things. So I always call uh, crimson clover and buckwheat like season benders. They just kind of will fill in the gaps, germinate quickly. The buckwheat typically flowers within 30 days of sowing the seed. Crimson clover takes a little bit longer, but again, the two together look really dynamic. And we've done this before. So basically we're just gonna walk around the garden and anywhere where there's open mulch space where there aren't already seedlings growing, we're just gonna scatter some seeds and let them germinate in place. So let's get to it. I'll show everybody how easy it is. So you can see this corner is kind of boring and disappointing. It's because the plants that were put in here melted from some of the cold snaps. The things that are here, it's celery, and scattering the buckwheat and crimson clover in and amongst that won't impact the celery at all. I did want to show you that buckwheat is starting to germinate in place from last year. So buckwheat can self-sow. I've never found it to be invasive in any way. Um, but that's actually was the thing that I recognized, oh, it's time because here it is growing on its own. So we're just going to... You see how this border is kind of boring towards the front? We're just gonna fill in this space between things like the nigella, which is here, the, the poppies that are really starting to grow. We have a big open space back there that if we leave it open, weeds are just gonna settle in. So we might as well go ahead and engage the ground plane with something intentional. All right, so I actually think that it would work if, even if we didn't do this, but I'm gonna rough up the uh, mulch just a little bit so that our seed gets good contact with the soil. And I really like how the buckwheat and crimson clover look mixed together. So I think that's what we'll do. We'll just kind of walk around and toss out a couple handfuls and hopefully in a month's time, they'll be blooming and look really great and everybody will think it's like magic. Yeah. Okay, so you can see here in my hand is buckwheat and Aiden has the crimson clover. And now we're just literally gonna lightly scatter it. And because we have rain in, t in tonight's forecast, uh, we're not going to do anything else. We're just going to let the rain put wash the seed down into the ground and hopefully it'll germinate really in the, like, the next few days, like over the weekend. Um, it's the easiest way to just prevent weed pressure, just fill in open space with these quick cover crops. And these are both chop and drop crops, so that means you grow them and then you like mow them down or you weed whack them and you let the biomass decompose in place and that's actually where they release nutrients back into the ground so that they create a natural fertility cycle. We do that with basically everything is at the end of the season when these annuals are done we just take a push mower chop it all up in place and then we can plant for the next season. It's a really effective and easy way to approach land management and have a really high impact sort of design with lots of color and texture. So let's do an experiment where we don't agitate the mulch at all. And let's just toss some seeds in this area where we don't have good germination from the other plants.
And you can differentiate these and plant them in, you know, rows or layers. But I really like the two mixed. I like the crimson clover and the buckwheat combo. That bright red and, and bright white look really good together. I hope you'll be inspired to scatter some seeds of crimson clover and buckwheat to fill in the gaps in your existing garden. It's such an easy process. I mean, how long have we been doing this? Two minutes. Right? And we've covered all of the ground. It's really going to help make it so that the weed issues are significantly less. If you found this video to be helpful, please give us a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to the Breathe the Plant Lady YouTube channel for more practical gardening advice. And as always, thanks so much for watching everybody. Happy gardening!